Hello, everyone. I'm Soda, and today I'm here with Sandra, who is a horse creation coach. And am I saying that title yeah, right? It's a mouthful. I always say, I always have to think about it. Online course coach and consultant. Major tongue twister. So how how did you get into this? consulting gig that you're doing right so you know i'm from new york right so i was working in new york in the tech sector um and all along i was doing helping them streamline their processes and and workflows and all that and then because of life circumstances i'm now in south america and i was looking for work so i started doing virtual work and because of my background, I pivoted to helping people with their courses, right? But then to take it a step further, when I wanted to create my course, um, there was nobody out there like teaching me the right way, which is starting with the foundation. So I started learning more and more. And I said, you know, I want to teach this because I know there's a gap in the industry for people teaching you from the beginning of course creation. So that's how I got started. So basically you saw that there was a lack of material, a lack of resources to create these courses. And you're like, hey, I'm going to be that person that I wish I had, right? Exactly. I, I love that because to me, that that's all about what online learning is because there's there's so many things that we're like, I wish we had that. Hey, why don't I be the person who gives that to others? So yeah. what are some reasons that someone might want to create a course? Well, the, you know, the very first reason that a lot of people say is because they want to have an additional stream of income, really, to scale their businesses, right? Um, then some people, they want to be able to reach more people to teach people on a larger scale. And, um, basically is they want more time freedom in their life, because if you add an additional stream of income, you can serve more clients and take back some time, whether you want to be invested in your business or just in your life. Right. But that's all what, what we want. Work-life balance. So what are some ways that you are able to keep in work-life balance with course creation and how might that actually help compared to something like a normal nine to five job? Well, um, I usually work with people that are online and what happens is um, you, there comes a point where you reach them the capacity of how many one-on-one -on -one clients you can have. You, there's only one of you, right? If you create a course, you can create a group coaching program and teach more people in that one hour and not have to fill your calendar with one-on-one -on -one clients. So that's a way that you can get more time back into your schedule. There's some misconceptions about course creation and, oh, it's oversaturated. We don't need any more courses. What are some of the misconceptions that a lot of these people might have about course creation? Well, um, people that actually want to build courses, they think that you can create a course in a week. That's number one, right? Um, and another thing is that they're going to create a course and they're going to make uh, six figures on your first launch. That's a common misconception, right? To be truthfully your first launch, you might not make any profit because at that point, you're probably hiring someone to help you, the consultant, you're buying into tools, but that's okay because when you're creating a course, you're doing it for the long term. It's not just a quick um, make money one time. So this is like one thing that I, I tell my clients, um, just because you create a course, don't think that you're going to make a uh, thousands of dollars in your first launch. But that's not to discourage somebody from creating a course. It's just to be realistic. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I have been flooded with these ads about like, oh, use AI to make a, a course in just, you know, two hours and make a ton of money. 
And a lot of these these ways to try to sell course creation as a get rich quick scheme. What are some of the reasons that these might not be the best idea to invest in, and what some of the the care and um, passion that is important to put into your course? So the first thing is. Um, you cannot create a course just using AI, right? That's number one. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, AI is just a, a machine that which is bringing back information. It lacks emotion. It lacks connection to human beings, right? Which is what you as a course creator are going to have in your course, right? And a lot of people don't know this. Like ChatGPT, for example, the data is only up to 2021. And it's a machine, it brings back mistakes. And what I see people advertising, just to your point, that you see all these ads is create a course on any topic that you don't need to be knowledgeable on. And that is such a big mistake because how can you create a course on something you have no knowledge? You can't validate the information that the machine is giving you, right? So that is my number, it's like a pet peeve for me when people say, oh, I can create a course. I do use AI during my course creation process as like a, a virtual assistant, right? As a brainstorming buddy, something to probably give you some ideas, but it does not replace your knowledge on the topic that you're trying to create your course on. That's my perspective. I 100% agree. Um, and I personally, so I buy, I buy a lot of courses, uh, mostly for drawing and for writing also, um, just being more organized, a lot of different topics. And I was wondering from your perspective, what are the kind of, or who are the kind of people who might be, um, most likely to get courses? Are people buying courses still? And what are some of the reasons they might want to buy courses instead of maybe going to college or other oh, training? Yeah, the thing is that a lot of people think, oh, courses are overly saturated. And and I can say yes and no. It's oversaturated with average courses, right? When I work with my clients, we shoot for creating a high quality course that gives a true transformation, not just like a, a little course that once you're done with it, you're like, hmm, I'm not sure if I got it, right? And then as far as the people that are wanting courses, um, one of the main things you should do before you start creating your course is know who your ideal client avatar is, right? And, and this is something that I tell my clients. Um, I talk about this all the time. When you are searching for your avatar, you have to know the three faces of your avatar, right? Your regular avatar, which is all the demographics, all that nice stuff that you figure out. Then your struggling avatar, because you need to know what the struggles are of that person that you're going to sell your course to, because you need to market to that pain point. And, and the third thing is, and, and people overlook this, is your happy avatar, right? Why do you need to know that? Because your happy avatar is at that place now where they've achieved what your course promises. So this, all this information helps you market your course and helps you curate content that will resonate with the people that are looking to find your courses. So would you say that having a more niche course or a more broad course might help, or would it depend? Like, for example, I was looking at art courses, and some of the courses I get are more kind of basic, like how to get started, but there are so many of them that it's like really hard to choose. But someone just yesterday sent me a course that was specifically like how to draw D and D characters. Um, and it was a lot more expensive, but I'm like, oh, it's hard to find someone who specifically focuses on this thing, but there also might be less people interested in it. So I didn't know if you had any insight on that. 
So what I tell my clients is, um, let's say you're an art teacher, right? So you want to teach people how to draw, how to uh, paint. What you can do is instead of niching down, look at all the knowledge that you have, all the information, and build multiple courses at different levels, right? The beginner course where it's niche, but still that person can go on to your value ladder, your second course. But then you have people that already have experience, so they can just jump into your second course. So being niche down will help you get that ideal client, but that's not to say that you can create other courses with all the knowledge that you have. Yeah. Okay. So like, let's say you are a writer and want to teach your, your specialty might be uh, like Sorry, fantasy so. romance or yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. But you, you could still do general writing. So maybe um, you could do a general writing class, but then different element, maybe a, a fantasy one, a romance one of fantasy romance one. And the ones who just want general writing might get that general writing one, but then you have, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds if you have multiple courses, yeah. right, all together. Yeah, I think so. And the way you structure it is like in the funnel process, you know that once that person gets through your first lower ticket price course, they're going to be ready and willing because it's going to be so amazing that they want to buy the second course that you have to offer. That is genius. Um, I didn't even think of that. See, that's how little I know about course creation. Um, so I, I've i been hearing a lot of people, um, especially writers and artists, who have been putting their courses up on places like Skillshare and other platforms. And just today, actually, I was listening to a video of a, I think it was a writer. No, no, it was an artist who was saying how her sales were going like 50% in just the last month um, because things were changing with the platform. And I didn't know if that if that's just a risk of using a platform or if that's um, the risk of more saturation or what, is it better to use a platform like Skillshare or to try to have your own course that you sell with your own platform? Well, see, Skillshare and there's like, they're called marketplace uh, platforms and there's like Udemy and Skillshare. Those are the two yeah. most popular, right? Now, th those platforms are good if you don't have an audience and okay. you're creating a course and you have no one to sell to because they have the audience. But one thing to be weary of is that you won't make a lot of money off of these platforms. Because they take, like, for example, Skillshare, um, if you load a course onto Skillshare, you can't put a price on your course, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because they're a subscription model. People join Skillshare for, like, let's say $100 a month, and then they are able to access any courses. Um, so what they do, they pay you based on how long people have seen your videos and stuff like that. So you don't make a lot of money with these platforms. Um, I would only use them if you're like full of, of courses and you don't really care how much money you're going to make and you just mm -hmm. want to be known. You want to, you know, people to get to know what you do. That's when I would do it. But it's just, um, they allow you to market. Like for example, Udemy, if you market the course, they still have to go through Udemy and Udemy gets a portion of it. So why don't you just market it yourself and put it on the platform and get the 100% of the sale? You do have a smaller audience, but you you have control of how you sell and market your course. What are some best practices in order to kind of get your course out there to let people know that it is available? Um, the number one thing that I say is Begin marketing even before your course is ready, right? Don't wait until your course is all done to say, hey, guys, I have a course, right? Because the thing is, it's just like that no like tr trust factor. People have to get to know who you are. You have to provide value. You can provide, you know, there's like, they, there's like a pre-launch part of the course creation where this is where you're promoting your course. 
And then by the time you get to that course, people are hopefully waiting for you to deliver it. And that time frame could be anywhere from six to eight weeks before you actually make your course available if you want to really sell it to a large audience. I mean, unless you have a captive audience, yeah, build a course in a weekend and they're waiting for your course. Uh -huh. but imagine you creating a course today and like, okay, and there's nobody to buy. So you have to market it correctly. And is that something that... Um, so what are, what are the kind of services if you hire a course consultant, a course, uh, coach, what are some of the things that they can do to help you prepare to market and launch your course? So what I do with my clients is I, I first start with the market research, right? But the very first thing you should do, even before you start doing anything else is research your course idea. That means is, is it a good idea? Because maybe you want to create a course on something that you love, but you're the only one that's interested, right? So you need to research to make sure that there's an audience, that people are going to be willing to pay for what you have, right? That's the very first thing. And I start with my clients with that. I help them do the, the avatar, um, outline their course, and create the pre-launch. So it, you know, when you think of course creation, a lot of people just think about modules and lessons. But there's a lot of moving parts that goes into creating a high quality course, which is what you want to have. You don't want to have an average course. Yeah. Um, what What are some of those extra things within the course that you you don't really think of, and some ways that you can make it an up above and beyond outstanding course? Well, no, um, you can provide a workbook right? That'll bring home the idea. Um, you can provide audio files depending on what your content is. Um, some of my clients have, they offer one-on-one, -on -one, one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching on the topic. If they, let's say they join early bird pricing or something, you get a bonus one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there's journals, there is uh, affirmations, there's so many things. And what I do with my clients is we go through all their content and we'll say, hey, this here can be a bonus. This little part here of your content. Anything like a checklist. So let's say you're you're a painter, right? So a bonus would be a list of all the tools that they would need in order to start creating that painting or that image that you're going to help them create during um, the process that they're going to go through with your course. So it all depends on what your content is and we pick and choose what resources they may need. I'm, I'm on like cold medicine. So if I seem a little bit <laughs> slow, <laughs> um, I might have to edit some of my right. spaciness out. So I apologize <laughs> for that. That leads to my last question, which is how do we know if, we are ready to create a course. How do you know if you have that expertise and where do you go to find someone like you who might be a good match to help you create that course? That's a great question. And I actually have had people that come to me and I want to create a course. And then when I talk to them, you know, I, I tell them, you're really not ready to create a course, right? Because first of all, you need the infrastructure in your business, which is like, let's say an email marketing platform, which is all the things that I help my clients figure out. Um, but more importantly is, you know, because you're at that pace in your business where you are full of knowledge, people are always asking you questions. If you get constantly asked the same question, Soda, how do I do this? What is this? What's so... You know, think about it. You could package all of that into a course and provide your expertise in that manner at the same time you're monetizing, right? So, you know, when you say expertise, you don't have to be like a hundred percent expert on the topic. You you know, you've heard you, you only have to be like 10 or 15% in front of the person that's behind you. And you, as the expert, know how to continue to deliver value, right? 
Um, so you also have to have a proven, um, I want to say methodology. So I know that I can help people create courses because I've done it a lot of times. So I can create a course on that. So if you've helped people um, do something that's artistic and you've done it and you've done it so many times and you know that it's proven, you can turn that into a course. I think everybody has a course inside of them. We just need to figure out what is that thing, that special sauce you have that's going to make you stand out from your competitors. Because there's going to be competition. There is. But um, if there's no competition, I would like revisit my idea. Like, why hasn't anybody created a course on this yet? But there's always going to be competition. I love what you said about you, you don't need to be a 100% expert. You just need to be better than somebody, better than, yeah. what was it again? Uh, like, you have to be 10 or 15% Pass the knowledge of the person that you're trying to teach, right? Yeah. So, and as you yourself can grow and acquire more information, then you can build other courses. Um, the thing is that you know when you're ready to create a course, when you say, listen, I, I'm stuck and I need something new. I need another outlet. I need an additional stream of income. I'm tired of working 40, 50 hours a week with one-on-one -on -one clients. So this is one of the ways that you can create a course and eventually make it a evergreen course, right? That's what mm -hmm. we strive for, where you don't have to be there a hundred percent of the time. And you could be like, they say, making money in your sleep. Yeah. That's our goal. <laughs> yes, please. Oh my gosh. This was super, super useful. So I really appreciate you meeting with me today. I land. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I will see more courses out there because there are so many subjects. And I'm like, I wish I could get a course on this. And I'm scouring YouTube for videos and they're just all over the place. So yes, there there will always be things that we need courses. Well, you know, I'm so glad you said that because, um, you know, everything is out there on Google, on YouTube. And you can search for everything. But people pay you to save them time to curate all the information in one location, right? Yes. So as you show that you're an expert in this, I would rather take a course that you created and learn that one thing in a weekend than to be hours on YouTube and not, not even knowing if the information is valid because anybody mm -hmm. can create a YouTube channel, right? So uh -huh. that's the main reason people will pay for your course because you have the solution that they've been looking for and you can solve their problems really quick. So it's like number one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Amen. Thank you again. And I will see you around. All right. Thank you, Soda. 